Six years ago, an Islamic Jihad terrorist walked into that restaurant and blew himself up in a suicide bombing, murdering 11 people and wounding over 60. It happened in this very location, right by the central bus station of Tel Aviv. 16-year-old Daniel Waltz was one of the victims who were murdered. On 2006, Passover, we flew to Israel from the States to celebrate uh, the Passover with my family in Israel. Uh, during the Cholamoed, we went to a restaurant in Tel Aviv to have shawarma while uh, terrorists came right behind Daniel and blew himself up. Daniel survived 27 days and then he just couldn't fight anymore. Daniel succumbed to his injuries at the hospital and died. But this tragic story has an uplifting twist. Daniel was an American citizen, and according to a 1996 law passed by U.S. Congress, American victims of terror are entitled to sue the states which sponsor such terror if these countries are on the State Department's watch list. Accordingly, using the Shurat Hadin Israel Law Center, Daniel's family sued the states of Syria and Iran in the American court system for aiding the murder of their son. We brought experts to courts that testified that in this um, specific attack that was done by Islamic Jihad, uh, Syria is liable and Iran is liable. Iran gives money to Islamic Jihad, uh, millions of dollars, it's actually written on the budget, budget of Iran, uh, and there is a section giving money to Islamic Jihad, uh, and Syria gives a um, uh, lets the Islamic Jihad uh, train in its territory in Damascus. They leave the uh, headquarters of Islamic Jihad in Damascus. They uh, provide them with military. Um, and we were able to prove all that uh, to court. Emotionally, it was extremely difficult because uh, it brings back, you know, in detail every part of the event and every part of our pain and suffering. But how can we let him die and not do anything to protect the rest of the people from evil? In the end, we got a judgment against Syria and against Iran for $332 million. With sovereign immunity denied, both states were found guilty in court. But $332 million is a large sum of money. And evidently, none of the governments involved simply hand it over. And so further legal measures are necessary. What we do is going after Syrian assets that are held by third parties' hands. Uh, for instance, bank accounts that belong to the Syrian government, which are in different banks in the United States or elsewhere. Real estate that belong to a Syria. Um, business ties, companies that um, do relationship, have a relationship with uh, Syria, trade with Syria, have commercial relationship. All that we are searching, we are looking, and when we find it, we go and um, go with a, with a court proceeding. It's, sometimes it's a turnover proceeding, if it's money that you can just turn it over to yourself. Uh, sometimes is uh, forcing a sale on a real estate that belonged to uh, Syria, and sometimes really proving that the asset that you caught and found belonged to the Syrian government. And this is how you collect the judgment. It may take years to collect the money, and though it won't bring Daniel back, it does supply his family a bittersweet, small sense of victory. Justice. Justice was done here. And they know that the one that will have to pay for the attack, the one that will have to pay for Daniel's life, will be the one who's really responsible for the attack. The one that gave the money to carry out the attack. The one that gave the support to carry out the attack. No matter what happened in the trial, and no matter what the outcome, it won't bring Daniel uh, back. But um, I think... Um, Judge Lamberth sent a very good message to the terrorist world. After Daniel died, my father took me aside. He was 92 at that time, and he said to me, while some of my family died in the Holocaust, I escaped, I chose life. 
you choose life too. And I chose life and that's, these words I hear every day. And it's a big motivation. We chose life. This victory opens the door for many other lawsuits to be filed in the United States for crimes against humanity. And there's an unfortunate abundance of such terrorist-driven crimes which took place here in Israel. For JN1, I'm Sivan Raviv, Tel Aviv.